the Republican Party is now using uh, critical race theory as divisor. And that is going to become much more political. Most parents love their kids. Mm -hmm. And when they think the kids are being attacked, correctly or incorrectly, they become much more passionate about it. And that's what we're seeing in school boards uh, right now, the elections in two days that mm -hmm. we're going to have, that the division is becoming much more severe. How do you get people to understand and care to go into more detail rather than just look at the headlines and one party taking advantage of the uh, lack of understanding of the issues and just run with the, with the headlines? Thank you for that question. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Critical race theory has become one of those hot button issues that uh, the Republicans and, and other, you know, disinformers um, who are engaged in disinformation for profit, frankly, there are plenty of, you know, media outlets that are making money off of this too, have, have seized on. And I live in Virginia uh, and in Loudoun County, that's one of the areas um, where people have really honed in on this topic. But it's no different than, than any of the other hot button issues that, you know, allow disinformation to flourish. It's, it's you know, weaponizing people's emotion. Um, and so what I try to tell people to do, and this doesn't solve the problem for us right now, but it is, you know, a broader kind of skill set that I hope everybody takes home with them. When you're looking at stuff on, on the media, whether it's, you know, mainstream media, fringe media, or even social media, if you feel yourself getting really emotional, there's a good chance you're being manipulated, right? Um, it, is, it is meant to drive that emotional interaction in you. So that is something I always try to warn people about, that when you feel that, you know, angst rising in your system, it's good to just take a step back and, and think before you share. More broadly, though, we were talking about PBS and NPR at our table at lunch. This is really why I think we need to invest more in public media in this com uh, country. Um, I, frankly, during elections, during uh, important events like on January 6th, I don't watch anything but PBS because they are getting into the nuance of the issues. I've been on a lot of the, uh, the main cable stations. You get three minutes for a hit there. When you go visit Judy Woodruff on PBS, they apologize if it's less than five. <laughs> um, and, and I think that's really important. You know, a lot of people have... Um, they're, they're kind of incredulous, right, that, that PBS, that NPR, these government-funded institutions can provide a nonpartisan, balanced source of information. But it works for the BBC. 60% uh, of Brits still trust the BBC, even though they have a lot of polarization problems as well. 60% still trust the BBC in a time of crisis. And NPR and PBS remain the highest trusted me media outlets in our country. And they cover uh, news deserts as well, where there aren't local for-profit news channels. So. I think if we invest more than the $1.33 per year per person that the United States invests in public media, that's going to help balance things out a bit. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So for those that didn't hear, uh, the, the gentleman said that um, the, the audience is quite small. Um, and that's right. They're, they're a small audience because they can't compete with Fox and MSNBC that are running these emotional headlines in their fancy studios with flashy maps on the wall. Um, it, it's just not the same. P PBS NewsHour is run out of a kind of run-down building in Arlington, Virginia, right? It's, it doesn't compete. And that's because we're spending so little on them. And they're, they're really, even with the corporation for public broadcasting relying on user user donations. So if you if you believe in what I'm saying, I encourage you to write to your representatives and ask them to increase that that part of the federal budget instead of continually hacking at it because the U.S., when we go abroad and we're supporting developing democracies, we say, ah, it's really important that you have a public broadcaster when we don't even have one that can stand on its own two feet. So I truly believe in it, and thank you for that important question. Um, I, I really believe that public broadcasting can balance out the scales in this equation.